Good evening, Singapore. This is Lin Tian after work, after five again. On this, the ninth and final day of the 2020 general elections campaign. Tomorrow is cooling day. We cannot do anything tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow, you head to the polling station. I am going to address the nation tonight at 10 p.m. And I hope you will tune in then. It's going to be live on Facebook. It's going to be live streamed. It will be our closing statement for this campaign. And it has been an exhilarating journey, to put it mildly. So many of you have come up to us to wish us well. And, you know, I'm an optimistic guy. I'm trying to contain myself, try not to have an exaggerated sense of optimism. But I'm very encouraged by the reception we are getting. It's just amazing. Last night, I went to have a walkabout with my colleagues who are contesting in Pongo Pasiris GRC. And we went to Pongo Mall, and you should have just seen the reception. It was incredible. And I thank all of you for the very, very warm welcome you have extended us. And this morning, I went to Bendimir Market very early to, to meet the residents there. You know, again, the same re reception, fantastic. And then after that, I went off to Mountbatten to have a walkabout with my colleague Siva Kuma, who's the candidate in Mountbatten at Jalan Batu, the market there. Incredible incredible um this evening i'm going to be down at wampo for the final walkabout with my teammates in jalan besar grc and uh and then i would like to have the final opportunity to address you at 10 p.m because by 12 p.m 12 midnight everything must cease I had thought that I would not do an after work program today because of the schedule. But you know, something happened, something developed this afternoon, which made me change my mind. And I do not know whether you have had the chance to read about it. But this afternoon, the online citizen TOC released an audio recording of what Chan Chun Seng said in a closed door meeting with PAP activists in January of 2019. Yes, this was about one and a half years ago. And it is shocking. It is absolutely, absolutely shocking what comes out of those, uh, what, what comes out of that audio. All right. And I'm not going to go word for word. I, I'm going to make some reference later to the TOC article that I have just seen a few minutes ago. But basically, Chan Chun Seng was saying the PAP has always used a crisis to win elections. Yeah, that is what I understand from the transcripts, from, from, from the audio recording. I've had the chance to listen to that audio recording itself. And I understand that Chan Chun Seng has now come out with a statement on his Facebook to say that it has been taken completely out of context. <laughs> well, explain yourself. Explain yourself. Because every word can be heard on that audio recording. All right? Yeah. And it's disgraceful, my friends. Totally disgraceful. What were they telling us beforehand? Oh, we need to have elections because COVID might be with us for a long time. And our parliamentary term is ending in January next year. And we only have until April next year to call elections. And all the opposition were united. We were saying, okay, you have until April next year. Why can't you wait until then? All right stabilize the COVID situation. 
you know, I we are sure that if you take the right steps, you can reduce COVID to almost zero. But they won't listen. And instead, they started attacking the opposition. All right? You had various ministers making all sorts of statements. You had Tio Chi Hien in parliament debunking Tan Cheng Bok and saying, oh, he had taken the advice of the attorney general and all that, and how they needed a strong mandate so that they could move together with Singapore to adopt tough measures to counter the consequences of COVID-19. Absolute rubbish, absolute rubbish. If you have confidence that you can contain COVID, all right, would the situation not have not be better six months down the road? Which is what I've always said. I've said, why are you rushing into it? All right, why can't the elections be held in September, October, November, December, or even in March next year? If you say that April is the absolute deadline. And Tio Chi Hien was telling us, we can't possibly go beyond April next year. All right? Now, to me, that is a fallacious argument. That is a completely fallacious argument. This government has been changing the constitution, all right, for about 50 times since independence. You know? You think that if it wants to, because of its overwhelming majority in parliament, it cannot change the constitution? Or it cannot pass an act to say that the current term must be extended? So we were treated to all sorts of fallacious arguments, my friends. Yeah. What is very disappointing to me as a Singaporean is that this is a government which has obviously used the COVID-19 situation as a crisis in Chan Chun Singh's words in order to win these elections, hoping to wipe out the opposition. And so you have had Lee Hsien Long telling Singaporeans, you have had Indrani telling Singaporeans, there's no need to vote opposition. We are going to give them 12 NCMPs anyway. You know, I mean, can you believe it? In a democracy, we have politicians mouthing these sort of arguments. So they won a 93 zero score line on Saturday morning. Yeah, That to them is a strong mandate. Even losing two GRCs to them would be calamitous. All right, Losing three GRCs to them would be calamitous. The feeling they are giving you is that if you wake up on Saturday morning and you feel and you see that maybe besides Aljunit, West Coast, Jalan Besar has also fallen, the whole of Singapore would disintegrate. Yeah and foreign investors would flee. Tomorrow, all the foreign businesses would have emptied out. Singapore would have hollowed out. That is the suggestion they are trying to give you. My friends, please, please, because this is so important for our democracy and the morality of our democracy. Please go and listen to that audio recording of Chan Chun Singh and what he said in January 2019, and ask yourself, would you be shocked? You know, I always say, there are very few things that we need a government to do. The most important thing is to keep the citizens safe. And that means the health of that citizen, the safety and health of that citizen is paramount. And I always liken a government to a father which good father would endanger the safety and health of his children? But we have a government. Despite all the evidence, closing a blind eye to the situation, willing to risk the safety and danger of his citizens, and calling an election so that it can retain power and it can try and wipe out the opposition. Ask yourselves, is that a good father or is that 
a father you do not even want to recognize. I would like to list, I would like to hear what Chan Chun Singh has to say, how he defends himself. And my friends, look at the COVID situation. Look at the COVID situation. We had one community case about two weeks ago. Today or yesterday, Roy Nung wrote an article and which I shared on the PV Facebook, which said that community cases had risen to 23 cases in two weeks. And then this morning I read that yesterday there were four infections amongst school children and one teacher. And you know something? The mainstream media, which is basically the lapdog of the PAP, all right, always has this sentence. The infections do not are, are household linked, implying that these school children did not get the infections from, from school. Again, how do you rule out that possibility? Why is it not possible for them to have been infected in school, gone home and infected their family members, right? So how can we in all good conscience say that the COVID situation is under control? And we have seen, we have seen in countries like Israel, the consequences of holding an election. And this I have said on this program a couple of times now. In February, Israel had about 21 COVID cases or 19. They held elections on the 1st of March or thereabouts. You know what? After that, they had 13,000 cases. Yeah. You look at the state of Wisconsin in America. They had at least 34, 35 confirmed cases of COVID people who were infected because of the elections. And here you are, PAP, you're trying to tell Singaporeans, oh, no worries. You know, we have taken all the precautions to minimize the danger of infections. When, you know, in daily life, in daily communal life, you cannot even bring that number down to zero. All right? And in the last two weeks, it has spiraled. And you know what? I heard Kenneth Mark, the director, uh, you know, the medical director on the task force yesterday. He, he was asked the question, is there a possibility of a further lockdown? All right. And you know what? Yes, he mumbled some answer, but I never heard him say, no, there is no possibility of a further lockdown. All right. Yeah. Go and listen to, uh, to what he told the press yesterday. You will find a video somewhere, either on YouTube or, you know, someplace. I, you know, on, on your feed now, on Facebook, you get so many of these videos posted. And so I just happen to have a, 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 a listen, a, a look. And the question was a very direct question. And he did not give a direct answer. He did not rule out the possibility of a further lockdown. So what does that show you? Yeah, you can have Gun Kim Yong tell you, yes, communal, communal cases have gone up, but it does not mean that there has been a second outbreak. I think, I think that is what Gun Kim Yong said. You can say whatever you want, all right? Let's come back to basics. The COVID situation is not under control. You, PAP, you obviously are hoping to use this crisis to win big at elections, and you are neglecting the safety and the health of your citizens. And you are a bad government, and you ought to be kicked out on the 10th of July. And I ask voters in Jalan Besar GRC, I ask voters in Pongo Pasaris GRC. I ask voters in Mountbatten SMC. Kick out Josephine Tio and team. Kick out Kyo Chi Hien and team. And kick out Lim Biao Chuan. You need opposition, strong opposition, like people's voice, to check them. 
you know it it is time i mean we have had enough of a party that spouts morality all the time but when you know their true intentions it is beyond the pale it is so shocking that no person of reasonable morals would even contemplate doing the sort of things you know they are they are they are strategizing about look at the look at the um listen to that audio chan chun singh goes on to talk about the crisis with malaysia which occurred early last year and i think there was some part in which he said well or to paraphrase him i think i think what he meant to say was this yes maybe this crisis offers us a good opportunity to call elections all right in fact i have the um i have the um toc article with me and if you just bear with me for a few minutes i would like to to read out parts of that toc article i have not had time apparently it's a very long audio recording you know but i think toc has um come out with um the relevant bits all right let me read to you and i want you to go to that toc article i want you i want you to go to that toc article all right and this is what in fact i'm going to read out the whole toc article to you because i think this is so important all right the article says in a roundabout way Chan Chun Singh has confirmed that the People's Action Party is using COVID-19 crisis as a means to have them re-elected, given that their votes have been falling over the last 50 years. And this is his quote. It's gone off. It's gone off. Stoppage again. It happened yesterday as well during a critical period, you know. Obviously, there are. I, I hope that there are not some elements trying to sabotage this uh, live stream, especially when I'm coming to the critical part. Now, I was reading the TOC article, and I want to continue reading, and I want you to pay very close attention. And this is what Chan Chun Seng says: Every election, the PAP vote problems. You check back the 50 years and see. Then suddenly a crisis will save us. Then we'll start dropping again until the next crisis saves us and it'll drop again. You look at the last 40 years pattern, he said. These are his words, huh? Coming up. Listen carefully. Lee Kuan Yew's death saved us. Before Lee Kuan Yew's death, 9 11 saved us, he added. Mr. Chan, formerly the Minister of Trade and Industry, was speaking at a PAP's closed-door meeting of 60 attendees in the Northwest Division in Bukit Panjang on the 9th of January 2019. And then he goes on. Mr. Chan also mentioned another crisis in the previous year that would have been opportunistic for the PAP. The party could have called for an early election over the conflict with Malaysia if it escalated, he revealed. So you see, my friends, yeah, you remember that crisis with Malaysia, right? Yeah. So, and you remember all the 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 warlike rhetoric, you know. And in in those days, I remember I made a few posts, you know, and I said in the end it was a shame. It was shameful the way the PAP reacted because. They were like beating the war drums, all right? Their IBs, you know, were, 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 were engaging in war talk, all right? And at the end of the day, they just slunk away with a, with a whimper. But obviously, they were hoping to use that crisis to call elections again. Because why? To Chan Chun Singh and PAP, that is the best way to win an election. Yeah? And he goes on to say, the most important thing for PAP in tonight's conversation must be the House majority. We will never know. Our neighbor might do us a favor and we might call for election tomorrow. Oh, so he was saying 
in other words, yeah, Malaysia might be aggressive. And then, you know, that's a great flag-waving occasion for us to rally Singapore and we'll call elections and we'll win big. Yeah? Are you ready, said Mr. Chan, indicating that the PAP would have capitalized on the crisis by calling for an election in 2019 instead. He explained that winning the election has nothing to do with the nine days of campaigning. Well, isn't it evident, my friends? You know, I just came from Media Corps because I had to record the party political broadcast. I am telling you, our state of electionary is disgraceful. We are given nine days, all right? The shortest possible span in the democratic world. The minimum, the barest minimum under the laws. And you know, every day you're hounded by ELD, election department, Mr. Lin. Uh, at this place, there is a poster infringement, all right? You got to remove it within three hours. Otherwise, we will summon you, you know? And I tell, I got the call yesterday and I was so fed up. And I told the ELD fella, please, if you go along this street, you will see that the PAP's posters have all infringed the regulations. They are not 2.2 meters above the ground. Have you been calling them up and telling them to rectify the problem? Every day you're hounded, yeah? I, I read a few days ago they ordered Tan Cheng Box Party to remove 50 posters in, in the West Coast. And so, nine days. But every day there's a deadline to meet. Like, you want to record the political broadcast today? You've got to have had submitted your script by yesterday. And so, where does that give you time, leave you time to campaign, to meet residents? Now we know why. Because for the PAP, the nine days is immaterial, right? It is a big show. You know, they reuse crisis. They use crisis. They use fear. At the end of the day, my friends, remember this. Crisis equates to fear. And when you have a crisis, you put fear in people's minds and people flee to safety. And that is the theory. And in 2015, did you not see that when Ko Bun Wan came out to tell Singaporeans, oh, we may not form the government. That was fear-mongering of the worst kind. And you know what? You had the pot calling the cattle black, all right, a few days ago, when you had Hin Sui Kiet tell the press, WP is using fear-mongering of an opposition wipeout, hoping to win seats. You know, this is coming from a man with a party that is infamous for using fear-mongering and crisis. Remember the words, crisis, to win elections. Not because they are the best. Not because they are competent. Yeah. Do not believe that rubbish coming out from Lee Hsien Loong, that he has assembled the best slate of PAP MPs or PAP candidates. <laughs> you look at their new candidates, all right? Are they not from the same sources, from the army, from the military, from civil service? And people think, why is there group thinking in, in our parliament? Well, now you know why. Yeah? They won't pick people who are earning below a certain level because to them that's mediocre. You know? They rather go and take from the military, from the civil service. And then. They wonder why there's groupthink. And then you can have Go Chok Tong warn against groupthink. You know Go Chok Tong two decades ago. Let me remind him. Three decades ago, two decades ago, was telling the world and Singapore, yes, PAP must diversify its candidates. And it must get people from a wider spectrum of society. But two decades on. What do you see? Do you see that happening? On the other hand, you look at the opposition. You look at how diverse all the candidates are. Everyone from the private sector, 
or almost everyone from the private sector. Yeah. We may not have the candidates that earn as much as the PAP, but at the end of the day, my friends, these are the people who are closer to your lives, who live in your areas, who send your children to the same schools that you send your children to. These are the people who deserve to be your representatives in parliament because they will speak up for you. They will understand your problems. I hope you have found this interesting. I urge all of you to go and read the TOC article, listen to Chan Chun Singh, Chan Chun Singh's audio, listen to the entire audio if you can, and wait and see what else he comes up with. All right? See if you agree with him that his remarks have been taken out of context. I urge you to do that. Thank you. I'm going to stop there. I will take a few questions. Now, someone has asked about the voting procedure. You know, there has been a video that has gone viral, right? About this ink that is being supplied by uh, the election department. And there's an audio going around saying, hey, don't trust that. Bring your own pen. Because in Kazakhstan, it, had, it was found that that ink can disappear if you put a flame against it. So, yeah, I have seen the WhatsApp messages that have gone viral telling people to bring their own pen to the voting station so that you can mark your ballot paper with permanent ink. I don't want to enter the debate. But my advice is, if it is no bother to you to bring your own pen, bring your own pen and mark your ballot paper with your own pen. Yeah, my advice. I will certainly be doing that. And I will be asking all my volunteers, all my party members, all my candidates to do the same. My friends, I want you to remember one thing. You get one chance to vote every five years. It is not an exercise that is carried out every month or every other month. This is your participation in, par in government. Every election is a referendum on how well you think. The previous MPs who are standing for re-election have done. How well the previous government who is asking for the mandate again has done. It is a referendum. It is not what Josephine Teo is trying to tell you. Oh, it's not about me. It's not, please don't treat this as a referendum on me. It's about your jobs, your future. Trying to hide behind her party's slogan. All right? Of course, this election, and especially for Jalan Basar, is a referendum on Josephine Teo's competence and leadership. And I will keep repeating that throughout. So, it is your chance to tell the candidates what you think of them. And I hope you use that opportunity very wisely. Thank you. TF Long has asked me, what good can you provide for us if you win? TF, my answer to you is this. I think we have a pathetic Singapore parliament at present. I am not going to promise you material things, all right? Because I am not the government. The opposition does not have the purse strings. But what we can do is we can bring more accountability and transparency to parliament. I in parliament can certainly wake up a lot of sleeping parliamentarians. And I intend to do my duty and I intend to do my job well. I intend to hold the government of the day to account. All right, I don't like what I'm seeing in parliament today. To me, it's like a tea party, yeah? There is no robust debate. Questions have to be submitted in advance. I want to see what are the rules and the standing orders of parliament. Because that cannot be the case. Why should every question be given in advance? 
we expect that minister, if he knows his staff, to stand up in parliament and answer questions. Yeah? And that is what happens in the British parliament. And you know, was it Tony Blair, the former prime minister, said? He found prime minister's question time on Wednesdays the most frightening event possible in a prime minister's life. And he would prepare for a whole day ahead of that. <laughs> and sometimes it got so terrifying, he even vomited. Can you believe it? Because you don't know who's going to ask you what. Questions can come from all over the place. But that is a mark of competence. If you have someone like Hing Sui Kiet, all right, who, who, who stands up there and when asked a question, by Sylvia Lim. And I would not even say that was a very hard question. To me, that was a very soft question. And then he fumbles. He starts flipping pages for like a few minutes. And then he asks for a recess, a timeout. You know that fellow doesn't know his, his script. Yeah? He has come unprepared. He thinks that he can just go through the motions, read what has been prepared for him, and that passes master. No. That is not what parliamentarians are made of or good parliamentarians are made of you better know your stuff like as a lawyer i got to go into court i have to be prepared to answer questions from the judge unexpected questions and in order to do that i need to know my brief i need to know my brief inside out yeah but in singapore you have Parliamentary, you are even lucky if they, 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 they come to parliament, all right? Yeah, and some of them in, in 2015, I cited some statistics in that televised debate. You find some MPs in the five years they are parliamentarians hardly asking a question, complete waste of time. Or, or the Hokkien's have an expression, you know, Jia Liao Bi, you know, yeah, we are paying you for nothing. I hope I've answered you. When I'm in government and I have access to the public funds as a government you have, that is when you can do a lot of things for people. And I can tell you, nothing that the PAP has given out or has promised the Singaporeans today is from their own money. Every cent they are spending is taxpayers' money. But as the opposition, I do not have that luxury. But my duty to you is to hold the government of the day to account. Thank you. Shu Lian, the PAP is despicable to use the crisis to call for GE to retain millions of dollars in salaries. You know, I, I think it is totally, totally despicable to use a crisis like COVID to try and win big in an election and wipe out the opposition. You know, you go and listen to Chan Chun saying, and after that, you tell me what credence you give to Lee Hsien Long, to Teo Chi Hian's arguments, that it is so imperative that we must rush to elections. Yeah, we must have a strong mandate so that we can move together and adopt tough measures to counter COVID. Total rubbish. You know, total rubbish. Yeah? And I hope you come to that conclusion. All right, my friends. I think, you know, I have again gone past um, what uh, the, the, the time I had um, allotted myself to speak on, on this subject. You know, the, um, the whole 35 minutes today has been taken up with uh, Chan Chun Singh's uh, audio. Um, but I think it is important, and I think we have not heard the end of it. Yeah, and it is something very, very important for you to bear in mind when you go into that polling station on Friday. Do you want to vote for a government who's like a father who will not take into account your safety and your health seriously? I know we are coming to the end of the campaigning period, but I will still appeal to you for your donations. 
because every dollar helps us to clinch that victory on Friday. And I want all of us to work together. And I want all of us to kick out Josephine Teo, Teo Chi Hien, and Lim Biao Chuan. Because I want a democratic and fully functioning parliament that will act in the interests of Singaporeans. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.